I know I've been dogging on AAA gaming a lot lately, but if there's one thing I can be complimentary of the best parts of AAA gaming, it's that we're getting more and more games that are unapologetically sticking to hardcore video game design, despite the masses pouring in. Capcom's been on a massive roll lately, as I'm sure you've heard before, with the likes of Resident Evil, Street Fighter. They just haven't had a miss. And so naturally, when you have this gold standard for Capcom in this current era, and now they're handling a sequel to one of my favorite RPGs ever, I was off the walls with excitement. I'm sure you can tell, I have a lot to say. But before we get into any of that, a quick word from today's sponsor. The following video is brought to you by AFK Journey. This game presents some brand new features, y'all, all right? It's not just an idle game, but an ethereal fantasy RPG game with distinctive visuals, intricate gameplay mechanics, and an added dimension with its PC-compatible side-scrolling elements. AFK Journey is available now on iOS, Google Store for mobile, and AFK Journey's official website for PC. Plus, it's free to play. All of this is wrapped into the 3D canvas art world of AFK Journey, where everything is breathing with life. In this magic land, you embark on a fantasy quest in AFK Journey as Merlin is gathering heroes across six factions and formulating winning tactics with different teams. You can reunite with AFK Arena's beloved characters and discover new ones, worlds of wonder in the palm of your hand. From Golden Wheatshire to the Veduso Mountain Cell, explore diverse big maps, solve fun puzzles, meet new NPCs, it's all right there. And beyond the familiar resonance of AFK arena's heroes journey adds equipment resonance they are giving 40 heroes away during the official release period for free when you log in including epics giving you a wide array of rpg strategies additionally you'll receive 200 plus free draws by progressing through the game and completing events like seven day logins so what are you waiting for use my key afk journey 88 in the description down below redeem it and get 100 diamonds and 18,888 golden coins thanks again to afk journey for sponsoring today's video my my only trepidation, if anything, was, all right, more people are paying attention to Capcom than potentially ever before. Are they going to change anything with Dragon's Dogma to make it easier for newcomers? And much like games such as Elden Ring, Dragon's Dogma 2 is unapologetically going to whoop your sorry ass, and you're going to love every second of it. I, as a massive Dragon's Dogma 1 fan, have adored every single step in this world. And I got to say that one thing that brought a smile to my face was right when I fired up the game, the title menu. It doesn't even say Dragon's Dogma 2. When you saw the interviews with the game's director saying this is what we wanted to do with the original game, it's just Dragon's Dogma 2 by title. This is just the original Dragon's Dogma except everything that it was meant to be. And as someone who was completely satisfied with that core product, uh, my gosh, the fact that they've added so much on top of this and stuck to so much of what made the original special, it is a wonderful game that no doubt will be in my game of the year conversation. So one of the defining mechanics for Dragon's Dogma 2 is the pawn system. Basically, these are NPCs that you can customize and they can guide you through this world. They have vocations, which are basically the game's classes, and you can customize your main pawn, which you can then share online. So naturally, I made Revan and Bastila, or at least I tried to. Now I'm trying to fashion it up a little bit because the reason I picked Revan is I felt I could get his likeness down based off what we saw in Swotor. And then I was thinking, yo, if I get the hood going and I get a little robe going, but right now all the robed gear is reserved for mages. So I'm a little upset because I really like the thief class. So I'm hoping I can find a nice fashion in between for Revan here. But Bastila, no doubt we're going to go with the mystic spear hand, get her all set set up with that double bladed lightsaber or at least that's how I'm head cannoning it and that's point one I don't head cannon almost ever I think the only series that's really brought that out of me is Fallout but with this game and the customization options the class options the very intimate interactions you have with your party arguably I draw a closer connection to Dragon's Dogma and its NPCs than really any other recent RPG. And that's because of that level of customization, that level of interaction, and how you're constantly morphing your party. So it's not just your main pawn. You have two others you can download online. Like I mentioned, the main pawn you create goes up into the rift. Other people can use, in this case, Bastila, or I can use other people's main pawns, bring them into my party. Things they've seen in the world, enemies they've beat, they'll provide me with advice. Like when I was running around, one of the pawns I had had guided me to the Trevo Mines, which was just a really cool moment. They've taken the AI there and evolved it dramatically. Now, make no mistake, the pawns are still extremely talkative. We're not done yet, Master. Our next destination awaits. We 
leave a few options of where to go, but I'd say our best bet is to start with the location nearest us. Trevo Mine is but a stone's throw from here. This is something I have been trained for, right? I had been there since the launch of the first Dragon's Dogma. I didn't think much of it and kind of enjoyed the constant chatter. But yeah, they are going to talk your ears off you should be prepared for that. Still, it's just such a great interaction to consistently have in the world. It's better than any story I think the game can really tell is how your party's exploring the world and how the pawns are interacting with one another. The banter between them all is much better. In the first game, it was a bunch of one-liners like, you know, check out that chest, Arisen. But now it's more about exchanges and sometimes mere observations. Like in my case, I've been told multiple times I've had an all-woman party. Speaking of which... The pawns in this party are women all. And yet no two of us are the same. Probably one of the most brilliant additions to the game is the pawn quest system. So when I am setting up my main pawn, I can attach quests to that pawn. So if someone downloads them and does a specific task or gets a certain item, they'll be rewarded from me. Like I'm a quest giver now. It is a really cool way to create content while also creating interaction and incentivizing people to utilize your pawn. So I set up a quest with Bastila where I would give people some healing items if they went out to take on uh, one of the Cyclopses, which I thought was like a fair reward, right? You're probably going to use some healing items if this is in the early going. Bastila was currently a low level pawn, so this felt like the fitting reward. And I'm really excited about all of that. Like that is such a cool feature so it incentivizes me to continue to rotate out pawns continue trying out ones that have quests attached to them completing those quests and then cycling them out again you download these pawns through rift crystals that you can get through completing all of the game's content by the way I haven't really thought of any of the microtransactions whatsoever but yeah you can just continue to rotate out the party and so it's definitely like my favorite component of the game they just took the pawn system cranked it up to 10 and it is fantastic i mentioned microtransactions that brings me to if i had like one design complaint that changed from the first dragon's dogma into the second one by the way it has nothing to do with the vocations which i like the changes they've made thus far it's about reviving in the first game when you went down you could be revived by your companions but in dragon's dogma 2 when you go down <laughs> you, you have to use a wake stone and i guess i get it but what sucks about this is once you're out of wake stones they're like all right uh you want to reload your save? The auto saves are fantastic, so I haven't lost any progress. Like, I literally load right before that fight. So while the game is difficult, the game itself isn't necessarily super punishing, where you're like, oh my god, I just got ruined there. Unless, you know, a certain plague starts to spread amidst your party and to other NPCs, then... You, you might want to watch out for that one. I'll let you discover that for yourself. So yeah, there's hardcore elements, but in those cases, you wonder a bit about the monetization of why they changed the revive system because when you run out of wake stones, normally, you know, you could hope that all of your pawns would revive you. It wasn't over until all four of you were down, but now in this case, it's it, like kind of a bad JRPG where if the main party member goes down, there's no revive items, that's it. And that's like my one complaint about combat, but otherwise, getting that out of the way, this game feels so much better to play than the first one. Uh, much like Dragon's Dogma 1, there's some serious impact to your attacks, even more so here in Dragon's Dogma 2. Like, the sound design is fantastic. Just like in the first game, you're going to scale some pretty incredibly sized bosses. I mean, sometimes you'll even see bosses facing off with one another, and then you'll zip to another part where you're fighting, like, a wyvern. I mean, it... This game goes crazy, and it's just happening in like a multiple minute span. It's the dynamic nature I've talked about so much with Dragon's Dogma that you've probably heard me say before, and it's even stronger here. There's nothing quite like wandering off the beaten trail, and all of a sudden, a uh, Cyclops stomps in towards you, and you are not prepared for this boss fight. Your back is against the cliff, and you gotta fight to survive. This game is going to destroy you at many times if you're not prepared and you're going to utilize all of your resources in many of its fights it's a game that's for the slow and thoughtful is how i would define it those who want to go and take their time and i don't mean that in a necessarily smell the roses sort of approach dragon's dogma 2 thrives off of management before you go out on what i would call a run check your party check your vocations upgrade your skills make sure you're fully equipped but not 
too heavy on the inventory. Otherwise, you're going to lose stamina quickly. Make sure everyone's rested. Go out in the morning because once it's nighttime, you can barely see and you got to find a camp ASAP. Even if you find a camp, you better clear that sucker out. Otherwise, you're going to get ambushed in the middle of the night and you're not going to get the full heal or the effects of the food that you have cooked. By the way, food in this game looks best looking food since Final Fantasy 15. Absolutely incredible work here by Capcom. I want to eat that food right there absolutely wonderful but yeah you have to prepare big time for all of these runs and once you get into that methodical nature you don't just sprint out into the open world you actually want to stay on the paths elder scrolls this is not where you know i just wander wherever i want to go in this game i find myself sticking to the paths especially at nighttime because anything beyond those paths, it's just a whole world of danger. It kind of reminds me of the Wildy and RuneScape where you had this line drawn. And once you leapt over there, it was the Wild West. You didn't know what you were going to find out there. But it was way more dangerous on that side than where you currently were. And so, yeah, just Dragon's Dogma 2 has no rules. It just will destroy you if you step out of bounds. And I love that about the game because it's a test of preparation. When I am fully prepared and I step out of bounds and I clean up a boss pretty quickly, that's a great feeling. It's insanely rewarding. And even if you aren't prepared and you overcome that, you find at the end of a cave some great offers in a chest that give you new armor, new weapons, whether it be for you or your pawns. It's a really, really wonderful feeling. And given the scale of the game, that sense of wandering is really strong here. I have had a huge exploration itch that needs to be scratched Starfield, that's you let me down big time there because that's what Bethesda Game Studios does best. And so I've been really looking for that game. And Dragon's Dogma is that wandering, seeing a little hole in the wall and going, hey, where's this cavern lead? And when I step in there, I see one path going to the left, one path going to the right. So I go to the right. It's a goblin's lair. I fight through that, find a little reward on a bridge nearby. I go back. Then I find a camp of bandits. I fight them off. I find a chest in a river with a reward there, likely tucked away by the bandits that they looted previously. Like, you just concoct these little stories, but that is the narrative of Dragon's Dogma 2, right? Which I haven't even gotten into yet at all. But that is the narrative for this game, is, is those moments of exploration and what happens during that. Like, you will have a completely different experience from me in that regard. And don't even get me started on the bosses, which are stories unto themselves, but just absolutely incredible stuff. And I will also say on the vocation side of things, I've been playing mostly... As the thief, I set up Bastila as a fighter, so she's more of the drawing aggro. I'm more of the, especially after equipping a core skill for it, trying to stay non-aggro. So I'm dashing through enemies with fire on my blades. I'm using my concussion blast to step away from enemies when things get a little too crowded, which is a cool backflip escape I can use in snare to pull enemies in. So I'm kind of that single target attacker who can do a lot of quick burst damage and then get out of there. And so that's what I'm talking about with like that attachment to your party, like that little chemistry there with Bastila. And she even, I put an ability on her where this was in the first one, you could springboard off of the shield and leap up onto bigger enemies. Like that type of stuff is what it's all about. I've never felt more chemistry with an NPC. I mean, that's what makes Dragon's Dogma 1 so special is you had these moments of interaction that it may as well have been co-op, but it was so impressive that it wasn't. And here it's kind of like what I described with Guardians of the Galaxy, if you all remember that review where I said it's the most co-op single player game ever. I mean, you kind of feel that way about Dragon's Dogma 2 as well. The vocations are great, though. A lot of management there. Upgrades for all of your different attacks that you can do all the abilities you can deploy you really get rewarded for investing time in the vocations there are advanced vocations that you can unlock by spending time with particular ones so there is a scale there you're not just pigeonholed you can rotate out with all of these so there's great gameplay options the game just never gets boring because of that but you definitely start to find your favorite eventually and then there is the story aspect of dragon's dogma 2 which <laughs> i guess the best way to put it is that it is very Dragon's Dogma 1 in that case as well. Now, as someone who was ready for that, I wasn't losing my mind. But I could see people snoozing a bit in the opening hours of Dragon's Dogma 2. Now, I think it offers way, way more as you continue to spend time with it. It's not that slow of a buildup. But there's no denying that the epic moments you're seeing on Twitter or in this video, maybe even, 
Uh, you have to work toward that a little bit. It's not instantaneous. There's no instant gratification in Dragon's Dogma 2, all right? So get off TikTok, will you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was mean to me. But seriously, like, you have to work towards that stuff. And so when the game opens up and you're in a cave and kind of just going from point A to point B, from fort to town to camp, and then finally to the big city where the game opens up, then you're like, okay, cool. This is what I've been looking for. But it follows the same. If you pay close attention, it follows the same exact beats as Dragon's Dogma 1. Like in Dragon's Dogma 1, you started off in a cave and then you find your way to a little fortress. And then from the fortress, you find your way to a little town. Like it is incredible how similar it is. But I say that in a good way. Like I adore Dragon's Dogma 1. And I don't think it flies so close to the sun that it lacks originality. It just evolves upon everything the first game did dialogue flows a lot better instead of the floating bodies i like to call them the floating heads from dragon's dogma one you get something that's a little more close and intimate you get more actual cutscenes in dragon's dogma 2 you get way more npc interaction i just i love how the game presents its content very natural very seamless and that's without even covering the end game which i have yet to touch which is really where dragon's dogma has always shined like it doesn't have the most brilliant narrative if you will but the way it plays into if you will in a new game plus or that extended exploration of the world you already know it is genius and the first game isn't the best story you'll play but the way it interacts with its gameplay mechanics is phenomenal and so i'm very excited to get to that end game in dragon's dogma 2 and see what that end game is all about but when it comes to what i've played thus far here in the base game dragon's dogma 2 is an absolutely wonderful time i have loved every second of it and in conclusion i will just say performance might be a question you've had maybe i should have put that at the front of the video but the reason it's here at the back end is because it hasn't been a big thought of mine I've been playing on PS5, messed around a little on PC, and I think PC is where the game is struggling the most, but here on PS5, where I put most of my time into the game, I really haven't had any issues frame rate wise. I've only seen it go up in certain instances, but it's floated around 30. And this is around after the first patch where they implemented the visual presets where you can cap it to 30 if you want. I've still let it be uncapped so it can go up and down. But even when things get super busy, multiple boss fights, lots of enemies on screen, all of the companions working together, yelling their little one-liners, everyone doing their abilities, I haven't had a major drop-off. I would tell you all and show you all if I did, but things have been totally fine performance-wise thus far. That's not to say it isn't a problem. As I mentioned in my previous Dragon's Dogma coverage, if you are seeing a lot of performance issues, I wouldn't blame you for waiting a month or two, letting this game get patched out, getting to the point it was supposed to be at, and having that higher rate of success guaranteed where you won't have to worry about performance at all. I don't think that's a bad call whatsoever. But for those of you who are feeling a little impulsive and you are scared off by the performance stuff, I will just say in my current experience thus far, very much no problem at all. Like, I was about to say minimal, but I'm like, I haven't had even a frame rate dip, so... Yeah, that's where I'm at with Dragon's Dogma 2. Phenomenal game. Love it from top to bottom, as I kind of expected, I won't lie. It really speaks to my my taste in games right now. But as someone who's falling a little out of AAA gaming, I got to say, like I, I this is the type of stuff that'll pull me back in. Brave, bold ideas, unapologetically hardcore, and has an incredibly gripping world with super epic bosses and stories that you can just share with your friends the water cooler moments this game is full of them so i'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on dragon's dogma 2 down below would love to hear how you're experiencing the game what classes you're playing as or sorry vocations uh, how you're just enjoying things thus far or not enjoying things let me know down below other than that take excellent care of yourselves and i will see you in the next video stay sexy stay active i love you all peace